Good evening and welcome to the workshop. I want to catch you up a little bit on what's happened since the last video. So let's go over to the workbench. I wanted to show you here uh, as contrast to the bit of a downer at the end of the last video, uh, how I managed to uh, get these assembled. And I want to quickly run you through exactly what happened. So these horn stay plates have the holes drilled exactly correct and they're all within one or two thou of length so i know that these are all bang on there's nothing wrong with the horn stay plates the only uh, variability is going to be the spring plates so because i filed i rounded these over i can't reliably infer the original length of the parts but they're all now also within a few thou of each other and so because of that uh, when I drilled the holes on the spring plates, I must have moved the table that way an extra 15 thou. And I'm not sure how I did that, unless I forgot how to count. But what that meant was this hole and then this hole were closer to the centre of the part by about 15 thou. So in order to rectify that, I could drill the hole out on either plate to make it slightly larger. I decided to not do that on the horn stay plates because I'll need to spot through the holes in this plate into the axle boxes at a later date. So for now, um, I actually opened out the holes on the spring plates and I did that by drilling them uh, a 32nd of an inch over their nominal size of 3 16 And that is an increase of a 32nd of an inch, uh, which then means which is, which is 30 thou on either one. They both need to move out 15 thou, which is the radius increase. Uh, and so because of that, the spring pins can move out 15 thou or 164 each to then be in line with the holes in the horn plates. Adam and a few gentlemen on the Model Engineers Clearinghouse have suggested not to sweat too much around opening out the horn stay plate holes into that pill shape just yet. Uh, but as it stands, that's the part. I've decided to not make the springs. And that's not because I don't want to, uh, but rather that it seems to be a whole thing to learn that's separate from everything else I've learnt. And I don't know how many springs are going to be in this locomotive, um, but at uh, 99p each, I'm not sure it's worth learning to make all the springs. That said, um, I bought some to fit and I will learn spring making separately from this out of band of the locomotive build at some point. And when or if I do, I will probably replace the purchase springs with some ones that I've uh, wound myself. And that's pretty much caught you up to where we are. So I think you'll agree, it's about time we get started on the axle boxes. But before that, I've got two questions to ask you as the viewer. I'd like to know whether or not this short form content of between five and 10 minutes per video of machining one or two parts per video is useful, is interesting, um, is enjoyable, or whether you think it'd be better to have them as long form content with larger sub assemblies being put together. Secondly, uh, like every other hobby machinist on YouTube, I have thought about putting a run of stickers together with the WW logo because uh, I think that's quite a cool logo and I could do it some around here, certainly. Um, but I wanted to know if the you as the viewer would like some stickers. I'll happily send them out to whoever wants them, um, but I just want to gauge if there's any demand at all before I <laughs> spend my hard-earned cash on, on buying stickers that nobody wants. All right, these are the blanks we have for our axle boxes. They are about 40 mil, I think, in each direction. And we need to get these down to... Uh, one and five eighths tall and one and a half inches wide. Here is a solid axle box, uh, which looks pretty straightforward. Um, the problem with that is if you do it like that and you need to change the axle boxes, you have to either take off the wheels or use something very scary to cut the axle box off in situ. Um, a split axle box is what I think I'm gonna go for, which is this. So essentially we have to create the full size block and then we mill out a 15 16 by 15 16 section and then we fit another piece in there and pin it and then we complete the rest of the operations. So let's get started. I think making these axle boxes is a perfect opportunity to take advantage of the horizontal milling capability of the 2B. As you can see, it's in a bit of a state. So we're gonna clean it up, get it converted, 
and I'll time lapse you through that now. Bringing you close in here, here is the belt, or here's where the belt was for the vertical head. Um, it's now loose here. I'm gonna remove the belt guard at the back and this will just lift out. Now, were I to try and push this head back, because it's quite a substantial casting, uh, to alleviate any sway on the overarm, I would be loosening off the two bolts on either side and then this assembly can be rotated um, all the way around so that the spindle is pointing up in that direction which gives the most clearance across here and this head can actually slide all the way back um, and then this overarm can slide forward. As it stands I'm actually going to bring the overarm forward and clamp it down in situ with the head still where it is and we'll see what kind of deflection if any we have in that. found ourselves a rather dirty but sharp 5 8 side and end cutter so I'll be mounting this in the arbor and we'll take a test cut sorry for all the weird colors in the following videos I don't know what happened something messed up with the camera the horizontal arbor has a drawbar just like the vertical one so I'm just tightening that now see is the condition of the shoulder because I want to cut the axle box slots uh, with with one part not one pass but without traversing this left or right so it's important to know that I'm going to get a nice vertical right angle in there so I'm going to keep going on this with a little bit deeper this time maybe I'll take an even deeper cut let's try 75 thou see if it can cut through an eighth in one go given that this piece is now scrap anyway and I have a little shield here to stop myself from getting showered with uh, aluminium let's see
it took an eighth of an inch cut and then I just cleaned up the edges and that's the result like uh, you, you can't feel that 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 there is there are marks there but that's like a that's a mirror finish um, so yeah that turns out it can cut an eighth of an inch in one go three or six and a half on that side three or six and a half on that side so we've got uh, a piece which is pretty bloody parallel which is exactly what we need for the axle boxes it's at this point i realized i probably should be looking at the correct surface feet per minute for the milling cutters so uh, in the older shop theory book by the henry ford school have a look here cast iron should be at approximately 90 feet a minute and with a cutter diameter of four inches we need about 90 rpm so I think now we're ready to actually get started machining those axle boxes.